Here at Copper State and the Buckeye Air Fair, we had the chance to fly this particular handsome airplane you see beside me. What we're looking at here is the airplane factory's Sling TSI. I thought this was a Sling 4 with the 915 in it. It's not. It's much more than that, actually. It does have the 915. It does have the constant speed problem. This is meant to be a cruising airplane. It has the potential to uh, speed along quite well. Uh, looking at the numbers for the airplane here, um, uh, you're going to see, uh, you know, north of 120 knots on this airplane. In fact, we saw considerably higher than that. We saw, uh, even at fairly low altitudes, of about 3,500 feet, and we went up to about 7,500 feet. And at that time, you're going to see numbers that run up to uh, uh, past 130 knots. Uh, VNE is 145 knots, so clearly you don't want to exceed that number. But at altitude, and remember, you've got a turbocharged engine, you've got a constant speed prop, so you can go higher up in the airplane uh, in the in the at altitude and can get a higher true airspeed. In fact, they had pictures of their flight out here from the west coast to here near the Phoenix area, and they were seeing at one point 180 knots of ground speed. Now, they had a tailwind as well, so that's part of the factor, but they saw some pretty breathtaking numbers with this, and my experience with it is, yes, this airplane will run probably consistently all day at, I don't know, 130, 135 knots. Doesn't sound too out of range at all. So very impressive, but it also climbs very enthusiastically with all this in it. They had four people on board, all normal size, good sized people, not real big people, but four of them, plus uh, something like a 50 or 75 pound bag of tools that they had, and lots of fuel. The airplane holds 65 gallons of fuel, so there's 300 and some pounds. They had all that stuff in here, and he said, boy, the thing just took off and climbed out like crazy. No surprise, my, that was my experience too. Taking off here from the Buckeye, a municipal airport where this show is going on. Uh, you can, uh, we climbed out at much better than a thousand feet per minute uh, at uh, 80 mile, 80 knots, and uh, no problem achieving that. In fact, if you pull it back a little harder, you can see uh, 1,500 feet or more of climb rate. So, and, and that looked like that would just sustain for quite a while. Again, a benefit of a turbocharged engine, perhaps. Okay, so now I said that this was not a Sling 4, and I started to document that the wheel pants changed. Well, that's not all. Very major thing is that the wing has changed. This is not the same wing that we saw on the Sling 4. This is actually a shorter wingspan. It's closer to what's on the Sling 2, the LSA version, but it's not that either. It's got a whole new shape to the wing. It's got a different airfoil shape. So these folks didn't just take a Sling 4 and put a big engine on it and do some work to make that engine uh, accommodated by the structure. They did a whole redesign of the airplane. The wing is new, the wheel pants are new, but the fuselage is also new. It's got refinements in various places. For example, I'm going to show you if the camera can reveal this. We've got all flush rivets here. Now back at this point we start to see not flush rivets anymore, but this is an important air, uh, uh, part of the full frontal plate area of the aircraft and it's important to have it be smooth up here. And in various ways throughout the aircraft, the leading edge of the wings also has that same treatment. Flush rivets at the front or dimpled rivets at the front and then not dimpled rivets as you move back further on the wing where it's no longer a valuable attribute. But this airplane is, has been refined from nose to tail, literally including the tail. New uh, arrangements on the elevator now have those counterbalanced, which uh, makes the controls very nice. Well, how does all that combine now to its flight characteristics? Well, Sling 4 has always been one of my favorites. When I first flew the Sling 4, as a matter of fact, at uh, Copper State Air Show about uh, two or three years ago, uh, I was very impressed with it. I went, wow, this flies as good as, or maybe even better, if I can be sacrilegious enough to say it, than the Sling LSA. Very nice handling characteristics. That particular one had the 914 turbo in it. Now with this bigger engine, more powerful engine in it, it's got even more enthusiasm to its climb. Um, so the airplane is, is just a delight to fly. Conventional rudder pedals on both sides, steerable nose wheel, but a handbrake, a single handbrake. And you'd think, okay, well, that's fine. Some GA pilots might go, well, I'd like to have toe brake so I could turn really tightly. So Jean uh, gave me a demonstration. Just with regular steerable nose wheel, we turned around 
uh, uh, well inside of, I think, one wingspan of the aircraft. I actually would not have believed that was possible, but by burying one rudder pedal all the way down and using the brake in, a, in an effective manner, he was able to turn us literally around on about half of a taxiway. Uh, it's a convincing thing for those that have not used handbrakes that this one works so well that way and is yet so maneuverable on the ramp, which is an important quality. Two things to touch on. First, let me do flaps. Uh, there's a knob in the center, uh, flap switch pretty easy, preset positions, one, two positions down, and then full flaps. Full flaps is 30 degrees down. Uh, and there wasn't much pitch change in deploying flaps either direction, which also says good things about the general design of the airplane. There was not a lot of pitch change when deploying flaps, so that's significant, I think. Um, but the other thing about having this particular uh, engine and adjust in-flight adjustable prop means that there has to be a prop control. And then when you are operating the throttle, you're operating based on different gauges. For example, you use manifold pressure instead of RPM uh, for your primary guidance on this. So there's, if you don't know those kinds of qualities, that's something new for people to learn. For those pilots that say, well, but I don't have any of that manifold pressure and, and throttle and, and RPM gauge gauge experience and I'd need to learn all of that. Well, if you sit tight for not too long, you may have an opportunity to use something called single lever control, which is already being tested with this engine in another aircraft, the per per uh, Progressive Airdyne Sea Ray, uh, and there'll be other aircraft that will be testing that too. And single lever control is a very simple system for the pilot that just has a throttle, only a throttle, all the way forward is going to put it into a climb position. As you pull back a little bit and start to cruise, the prop is automatically going to change. It knows altitude, it knows the request you're making of engine power, and it can set for you. There's no workload to a single lever control system. If you think that's experimental, it's definitely not. Every single Cirrus SR20, SR22 out there has single lever control. However, those airplanes are not single lever. They still have to have a second control for mixture. The Rotax doesn't require that. So it could actually be one of the simplest ways to operate the 915 engine with an in-flight adjustable prop, but without burdening the pilot with extra duty. That's still a ways in the future, but FAA has shown an interest in moving that direction because it's safety oriented. The pilot doesn't get behind the eight ball and still gets all the power out of the engine. Okay, now let's look at the interior. Uh, four seats. Uh, you could have four full-size adults in there and it would be comfortable to be in the back seat of this airplane even for an extended time. So it's a true four-seater with the power to make it work right and the refinements to the airframe to make it a joy to fly. That's pretty significant. In the front seats, remember this is an airplane, not this particular one, but airplanes like this from Sling have gone around the world, not just once, but two or three times. I've lost track of how many times they've flown entirely around the world with this airplane. And they say that sitting in the airplane that long, it's still comfortable inside the airplane. Pretty significant. I found the seats to be very comfortable. I didn't notice uh, any discomfort sitting in the seats, and that's the kind of thing that shows itself right away if the seats are not well designed. They also come very far forward on your leg, which supports your leg very well, which again speaks to the ability for this airplane to fly along way. Now we did see fuel burns of in the, in the range of about six gallons an hour. Let's just call it that number for ease of reference. It's uh, maybe a little more, maybe a little less depending on where you've got the throttle, but around six gallons an hour for that much power. That's very economical operation. This particular airplane has a long range tanks on it, so it has 65 gallons of gas on board. That's uh, 330 pounds of fuel. So what does that mean about what you can put inside the airplane? Well, this particular airplane here can handle more than a thousand pounds of useful load, can carry more than a thousand pounds. Now, useful load includes fuel, so if we take fuel out of that, you're still at around uh, 650 to 700 pounds of stuff you can put inside that you really want to take places. That translates to four normal sized people or three pretty big people and some stuff. That makes this a very useful airplane. This particular airplane is 44 inches wide. If you wanted to have it full of two big or four big 200 pound guys, you could just fly with a little bit less fuel. You've got so much on board uh, that you really wouldn't need all that fuel anyway. So, 
Uh, then we went up and we did some flying. We I already mentioned about the uh, speeds. Uh, we also, at uh, the high speed, we slowed the airplane down. I had control of the airplane and slowed it down to about 60 knots, at which speeds I was able to do my Dutch roll uh, coordination exercise back and forth. Of course, it's a little sloppier than it would be at higher speeds, uh, and I did reasonably well at that, but it speaks well to the control system that it can handle that slow of speed, no problem. And what that translates to, the reason why that's valuable is if you need to land on a short runway somewhere. You can slow this place, airplane down. You could slow it down to 60 miles an hour. Still got full control of the airplane. Uh, no issues whatsoever. At um we also did a, an entire range of, of stalls. We did departure stalls, we did uh, approach stalls, uh, flaps, no flaps, and accelerated stalls, meaning stalls in turns. In every case, the stall recovery was very benign. Uh, on a couple of them, we did have the right wing dip a little bit more than the uh, left wing. Uh, the left wing typically did not dip at all, so there was a slight tendency that way, but it was easily recovered from. In no case did I use any additional power to recover from stalls. I just uh, lowered the a little bit and we're back flying again in an instant. And speaking of that, I have to say this because it caught my attention right now. When you add the power to this thing and you start taking off, Jean said, okay, well, just uh, climb out at 80, 80 knots. That'll be a nice uh, brisk climb rate. And I glanced down at the airspeed indicator and it's whizzing past 80 going up toward 95 just on takeoff which speaks to the amount of power available from this 915 engine. Okay, so then the, the stall regimen I did, uh, even in turning stalls, uh, 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 significantly steep angles we used, uh, more than 25 degrees of deck angle up. That's quite steep. You're looking at sky out the front window uh, and, and no issues with any of the recoveries. In no time did we use any power at all to recover. We did full and full flaps and no flaps and they both resulted in the same thing, albeit at somewhat different speeds. But then uh, we also did uh, in the turns uh, when turning to the left uh, with the uh, right wing banked up high basically the airplane just went to level at stall when we did them to the right it did it did start to steepen up a little bit to the right but it was easy to recover from that so if I'm going to now try and find just a few things to pick about and it's not easy because this is clearly a well designed airplane remember this company has been around for a little while now they've got about 500 airplanes flying around the world now the company is adding more aircraft all the time, building somewhere four to more than four airplanes per month. Uh, so they're putting out some product from the factory. Uh, they're obviously having a good successful run with this series of sling airplanes. A few things to pick about though. One is you see the doors sitting up there. Now the doors have been re redesigned as well. It's another thing that changed about them. Uh, they took away a little bit of the uh, glass that had been in the top. That, that door was almost all glass to begin with. Now it's a little less. I actually like that because it gives you a little sun shelter and real hot conditions and if you move your head to the right I was on the right seat if you move your head to the right I could look up almost straight up ahead so it still had good upward visibility but gave you a little sun shelter however there's no handle to pull that thing down it's a little hard to get at it to pull it down and they are going to change that they are also going to add a bracket right about here where my hand is I can feel a little indentation in the mold of the uh, fiberglass here that uh, where they will put another bracket so that you can have the um, a canopy held slightly open during taxi. We didn't need that here. It was cool here. We wanted the uh, doors closed all the way, but uh, on a real hot day, you'd want some ventilation, and that's going to give it to you. So now I'm uh, sitting on the wing so I can uh, peer inside the aircraft and look at the instrumentation. Now this particular one is loaded up. This has got the full Garmin uh, dual screen, big screen, G3X Touch, uh, marvelous piece of equipment. It's also got uh, uh, an IFR rated uh, Garmin uh, GPS in the center, uh, which allows you to do uh, uh, instrument approaches and so forth. It's got autopilot in it. It's got the constant speed prop and it has uh, the uh, smaller Garmin instrument as well. So this has got, this panel is loaded with instrumentations and there is not a round gauge to be seen anywhere in there and you don't need one. It also has a parachute system on board uh, and it has uh, multiple fuel uh, 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 adjustments for, for these long range tanks that I mentioned it had on it. Uh, so lots of stuff going on in the panel. That makes this airplane more expensive. This particular airplane loaded up with everything in the world on it. It's a, a, more than $200,000. However, the starting price on the aircraft is only about $135,000. I say only because for a four-seater, that's a pretty good value. And you're looking at a build time of, you know, around 1,200 hours, I understand. Of course, that varies widely by individual. Okay, so 
behind the seats, first of all, the rear seat is a, the back of the seat is a single unit and it can fold forward. And then there is space uh, on the pilots, on the left side of the aircraft, there's a pretty a generous amount of baggage area, which structurally can hold 70 pounds. Of course, that depends on how much fuel you're carrying and where it's located and so forth. But it's capable structurally of holding 70 pounds. And there is an extension to that that goes back into the tail uh, section further. Uh, originally done for a fellow that wanted to carry surfboards in his Sling 4 TSI or Sling TSI. Uh, a golf set of golf clubs could fit back there very comfortably too. Again, weight and balance has to be considered for those kinds of things, but the room is there on the aircraft to do that. The seats do adjust uh, a lever between your legs uh, down on the floor, much like they'd be on most automobiles, uh, allows the seat to go back and forth and that's adjustable in flight. The rudder pedals do not adjust. So dual control sticks on both sides. Uh, both of them have uh, trim indicators on the top. There is a fore and aft trim and the left and right buttons are used to switch on the autopilot or to switch it off. Uh, but uh, sticks on both sides. Entry to the aircraft, by the way, I didn't mention that. There is a step on the back of the aircraft and uh, on some airplanes you can't stand on the rear, the trailing edge of the center section of the wing. On this one you can. So by using that and by putting my hand right Right back up here where I'm pointing with these brochures, that's a nice structural point you can grab on there and pull yourself up. Then when you get into the aircraft, you do start off by standing on the seats, uh, at least one foot on the seat. Put your, I put my rear end on the top of the seat and then sort of slid down a position and you kind of go down in the airplane. You're, you're down in there. It's very comfortable once you get there. Getting out is a little more exercise. If I'm going to pick at something, that was one of the more challenging things. People that aren't quite as flexible as they used to be might find a little bit of challenge to get in and out of this, but that's pretty much true of many low wings as well, actually. So that is a quality of the airplane. Once seated in the airplane, however, uh, visibility is actually quite good. It may look like there's not a lot of uh, a window area there, but there is really quite a lot. Now, of course, you can't see aft very well, but you can see uh, either side. You can see down in front of the wing in flight and during taxi. Uh, we didn't experience any problem at all. Of course, it's a, it's a tricycle gear aircraft, so you're not having to look over the nose. But visibility, not an issue whatsoever. So there's a, a pretty thorough review, I think, of the Sling TSI, a very impressive machine with uh, so few flaws that I had to work hard to find any at all. I think this is an exciting development for the Airplane Factory. Uh, the AirplaneFactory.com is um, a gentleman named Matt Lichnatsky who has come here from uh, South Africa and been in the U.S. now for many years, runs out of the West Coast at the Torrance, California airport. That's just a little bit south of Los Angeles. And they have representatives in other parts of the country as well. But I think we're we're going to see people going places in the Sling TSI. You can learn more about it, the Sling LSA version, and all these light sport aircraft or sport pilot eligible kits on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us aloft in the Sling TSI powered by the 915 Rotax engine.